Hello everyone, welcome to another round of Tuesday Night Legacy presented by Spellhole Games. My name's Eugene, I'm going to be your commentator for this round one from March 22nd. We have a lot of cool things actually coming up in the future here. Uh, April 8th, we're gonna have our first Super FNM Legacy single elimination tournament, which we are hoping to have on this channel uh, at least a week afterwards. And we actually have a couple other fun things in the future. We're hoping to get some deck techs worked into the uh, normal rotation of videos. So if you really like this content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And with all that, let's get into the content. This round, we have Pedro playing his ninjas deck, Blue Black Ninjas. It's a tempo variant of getting a lot of value out of these ninjas that can draw a bunch of cards protected by all sorts of different counter spells. And on the right, we have Yishi playing a uh, Karn Echoes deck. So this is going to be actually very similar. It has a lot of cards that 8-cast does, but uses them just a little bit different, including the card Echo of Eons to generate a lot of value. So let's get started. With Ishii on the play, going to start with a Mishra's Bobble into Lion's Eye Diamond into uh, um, an Ancient Tomb. If you didn't know he was on the Karn Echoes deck, you could swear that he's playing 8-cast right now. We see an Ornithopter coming down for Pedro into Basic Island and a Retrofitter Foundry. This is a great turn one start for him. Uh, that Ornithopter, since it has flying, can be unblocked. And next turn, he could get a, um, a Ninja into play to start and then turn that uh, Ornithopter right into a 4-4 Construct. We see Ishii going for the big play here. Uh, with the Echo of Eons, the Lion's Eye Diamond, generating three mana, but making him discard his hand. The Echo of Eons, of course, having flashback of three, so it's like a free uh, draw seven cards, but unfortunately, Pedro did have the Force of Will there. So uh, cut to a lot of action happening on Pedro's side, uh, getting to Ninjutsu in the Yuriko Tiger Shadow. This generates a lot of um, damage and value. Uh, as the damage from the, um, the Yuriko shows the top card of the library, which Pedro gets to draw and deal damage to his opponent with. Going to the next turn, we see she playing a Karn Great Creator. This is going to be able to get him a lot of stuff from his sideboard, uh, creating something called a Wish Board. Uh, there's very specific cards that the Karn player wants to have in their uh, sideboard that can actually end the game, but we see she using it for the Lion's Eye Diamond, or at least consulting his sideboard to see that he does have that Lion's Eye Diamond in case he draws into the Echo. Since the Echo did get um, Counterspell that is Exile due to that flashback cost, we see she ticking down. He's going to go and grab that Lion's Eye Diamond. He actually did draw the Echo. So here we go. Going to shuffle up the graveyards and hands, and each player is going to draw uh, seven new cards. So although this does give the opponent an, a potential for drawing uh, into answers, especially a blue deck, Ishii needed that, uh, that extra value that was going to uh, come from being able to draw all those extra cards. It looks like that he did hit at least four lands, though. Maybe three lands? Yeah, it looks like it's a Karn and three lands. Did get a Lotus, Mox Opal, and Lion's Eye Diamond out of the deal, but nothing to actually progress the board state at all. And he's already ticked down that Karn for the turn, so it looks like he's in a bit of a bind. That construct sitting over there, 4-4, uh, four, four, so Pedro is presenting at least four or five damage, um, plus the Yuriko trigger. And at any time, you can use that Retrofitter Foundry to turn that Thopter, that Ornithopter, into another 4-4 four, four construct. Pedro kind of having a full hand, only has two mana, uh, red and, or no, it's black and blue. It's a blue-black deck, of course. Using the new Kamigawa lands. Glad they have the little symbol on them because other than that, they're a little bit uh, muddled, but they do look really cool. See a brainstorm, gonna go and get as much value as possible. Looked like it was two lands and a, that looked like a Hydroblast, but it can't be. 
All right, we see the Ornithopter attack and a, another ninja coming into play here. So whenever a ninja deals damage, he's gonna draw cards. He's actually gonna get two Yuriko triggers and two Infiltrator triggers. So Ishii goes ahead and concedes to that uh, overwhelming amount of value. Starting the game, uh, down with a Lotus Petal and a Mishra's Bobble, or no, that's a Urza's Bobble. This one a little bit different than the uh, Mishra's Bobble. It lets you see a random card out of your opponent's hand and then draw a card. See three mana for a Hull Breacher. This would have prevented uh, Pedro from drawing cards when the Echo of Eons trigger goes off, but unfortunately the Force of Will was there pitching a uh, Murktide Regent, one of Pedro's uh, big threats, and also huge CMC trigger off of a Yuriko. If you show off a Murktide Regent, your opponent takes a whopping, uh, what is it, a, a seven drop. So you take seven damage off of a Yuriko trigger, that would hurt. See the bobble go off, draw an extra card. It looks like he does have the Echo in hand but I don't think he's got the Lion's Eye Diamond. So we see a Saga come down. Saga being very useful in this deck, another toolkit thing. You can either grab more mana, like a uh, Urza's, or a um, Mox Opal. It can grab a Bobble if it really needs to, but also can grab that Lion's Eye Diamond, which starts up the combo all over again. All right, we see a second land drop for Pedro. Going and grabbing just a black source. And it's going to be Changeling Outcast. Changeling Outcast uh, also counts as a ninja, and it can count as a thopter since it is a changeling. And it also is unblockable, which is great tempo for the ninja's deck, getting in there and being able to have a guaranteed ninjutsu target. Seal land come down on Ichi's side. It's a Seed of the Cyanod, another uh, artifact land, so it does count as Metalcraft. If that's something that he needs, maybe with a Mox Opal. Or say a um, uh, the Karnstruct off of the Urza Saga would count towards its artifact count. Just a lot of cards having double uses uh, in all sorts of different ways. Thinky, she's trying to decide if it's worth tapping to play a card in his hand or if that Karnstruct is going to be more useful. Does have to take two damage to get it out though. Decides that probably the Karnstruct is gonna be better. We see a Ponder uh, before attacks. Gonna play a Prismatic Vista. I'm gonna go ahead and get another basic. Now Pedro does have dual lands in his deck, but basics just, you know, in a meta where you can probably have a statistical odds of seeing a D&T deck, uh, especially in the first round, it's like one in four, I think, one in three maybe. Uh, always better to get those basic lands. Yeah, we see that in ingenious infiltrator come in. Gonna get to draw that extra card. Ishii creates that construct at the end of Pedro's turn. It's going to be a 2-2, two, two. but when it, once it is Ishii's turn and we see the we see the Urza Saga trigger go off, I think he's trying to decide whether it's worth getting this second Construct Boy in play. Or if that card he drew is just more important. Man, it is, it is a tough call. Because if he waits here on not getting the construct, then he's going to have less to um, interact with these ninjas, but uh, it really depends. Oh, it looks like it's an Urza in his hand. Okay, here we go. Getting that Saga trigger. Did decide to get the construct, so he had to pay four life to get these two constructs in play, but uh, they are going to be four fours, which can trade with that ingenious infiltrator. Actually, it'll just straight up block the infiltrator as it is a two three. Got some fatty beats. Yeah, he is definitely looking at that Urza. We'll talk about him in a second. Gonna get a Mox Opal. Mox Opal is basically free mana, uh, although it is a legendary artifact. You 
can tap for any color as long as you have three artifacts and it does count itself. So you just have to have two other artifacts in play. Nope, changed his mind. Gonna go with the Lion's Eye Diamond. All right, gonna go for cuts. Here we go. Gonna see that City of Traders, and <laughs> uh, that's gonna be, gonna shuffle away the Urza, but he does get the Echo of Eons trigger. Side Master Thopterist, whenever he casts an artifact, gets a 1-1 a one -one Thopter. So Psy is going to generate a ton of value with all of these zero drop artifacts and Echo reloading the hand, uh, hopefully drawing into a bunch of Lotus Petals, Lion's Eye Diamonds, gonna get a bunch of 1-1s one down on the field. I think he was hoping that, oh, he's got another Echo there. I don't know if I saw the Lion's Eye Diamond though. We'll see what he drops out. Oh, he does have the, the Lion's Eye, so he can go again if he wants. So one, two, three, four, five. Five, five constructs. Gonna go for it. You know, sometimes a five, five construct, two, five, five constructs is just enough to get through. We will see. Dropping down an Ornithopter on Pedro's side. Into a Retrofitter Foundry. This is gonna generate a little bit more value. You can get a four, four construct uh, right out of that Thopter right now if he needs to, but it's just a little bit too small to trade with these constructs. So Pedro is trying to navigate this maze now that uh, Ishii has a, a commanding board presence. I think we saw another opal there. Oh, I forgot to add this one in. The defense grid is a two mana artifact that says you have to pay three mana in order to interact on your opponent's turn for each of the spells that you cast, basically making counter spells pretty useless. Although Pedro has three mana exactly, so he can interact with one spell on his opponent's turn. See a Chalice of the Void come down for one. No more cantripping. Looks like a tropical island there. Maybe one other land. Yeah, it's with all of these uh, artifact spells up in that artifact count. These two construct boys are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven elevens coming across the field. They don't have trample, but it is tough. Ooh, we see the echo go off. Oh man. So they're gonna draw another seven cards here if Pedro doesn't have any responses. Yeah, he's counting it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11-11s. See Pedro go for a fetch land so that he can fire off something. Maybe he's countering the echo. Yeah, you have to, have to read that defense grid. So this has to be a free spell in order to be able to interact with it. Okay, so it's a surgical extraction. Surgical Extraction naming. Oh, I missed the target. Was it? Was it the Lion's Eye Diamond? Oh, I missed it. In any case, I guess Pedro uh, fired that off in order to actually just have more information, get to see the whole deck, make sure that he is fully uh, informed as he goes into game three here. And we see a turn one Graph Digger's Cage. Players can't cast spells from the graveyard anymore. That's going to turn off things like uh, Emery, Lurker of the Lock, and more importantly, the flashback spell of the Echo of the Eons. Yeah, can't cast. All right, we see a um, Once Upon a Time here that's going to be cast for free, as it was the first spell of the game, and it's going to show a Hull Breacher. Going to start slapping down artifacts here. See the Cyanod, Lotus Petal, uh, Lion's Eye Diamond into a one mana Emery. Now he can't cast any of these spells from the graveyard because of the Graft Digger's Cage, but it is going to at least be a body on the field. Can't block an Ornithopter though. But hey, 
uh, more cards in the grave, I guess the better for Ishii. Once he can deal with that Graft Digger's Cage, you want to be able to have access to stuff. See a Baleful Strix come down, just a 1-1. One, one. Uh, Death Touch Flyer draws a card, no big deal. One of the better uh, two mana plays. Card just generates so much value, especially if you can uh, send it back to your hand somehow, maybe with uh, Ninjutsu. Nobody wants to be blocking a uh, Death Touch creature anyways. I believe this is Ishii's turn. Trying to decide what the land drop's going to be. Looks like he chooses Ancient Tomb. Has access to quite a bit of mana at this point. One, two, three, four. Four mana gets down the Urza. Oh, here's Emery. In case anybody ever wanted to read him. Or her. Urza Lord High Artificer. This is a pretty fun card. So, makes the golem when it comes into play. You can tap an artifact to generate blue mana. And if you pay five, you can get a random card out of your deck and put it straight into play. This card uh, sometimes by itself can run away with the game. We see the two artifacts that Ishii had generated into the uh, defense grid. Although when it was cast, we saw a snuff out just paying four life to get rid of that creature. Probably a really good idea from Pedro, even though he's losing quite a bit of life here. We see the Infiltrator come in. The Hull Breacher now cast, as it wasn't able to be cast last turn. Can't tap uh, Emery. It's not an artifact. So uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four mana from Yishi. We see a couple good ninjas on Pedro's side, but we see a lot of value being generated here from Ishii with that Urza Saga, making those Karn Strucks so strong. And uh, Pedro sees the writing on the wall and concedes the game to Ishii. So that is the end of round one. Uh, please join us for round two, where we have our very own uh, William on his black, white D&T versus can't remember who his opponent is, but it's going to be a good one. Oh, it's Eric on the 8cast. So join us then and please like and subscribe to the videos if you haven't already. Thanks. See you next time.